<laughs> well, the orange cow cowboy hat was a hat that my son picked out for me at e Elages. And for many, many years, I've always worn this obnoxious pimp daddy orange hat. Um, we're, we're always there to answer as many questions as possible. Um, make sure everyone is, is safe. So if you need to find the ref, I kind of stick out. The early 80s, the three-wheeler was developed and the government kind of put a big kibosh on the Im importation of the th three-wheelers because of so many uh, different accidents ha happening. And so they were doing a lot of four-wheel conversion kits instead of the one wheel in front, they put the two, two wheels. And uh, in 1984 was the first development of the actual quad or four-wheeler. And Suzuki was the first one to um, put four, four on the floor. Well, okay, it all started out as we were doing a conversation uh, about the vintage class and how about everybody in their Yamahas and how you'd like to stick it to them with a two-stroke. The only thing eligible that we had here would have been a 360 Husqvarna, which I didn't even know that we had a complete bike, but we started off with pieces and parts and just kept digging through the barn until we found what we needed. It took a lot of searching, basically. Uh, I have way too much stuff. And we found a good frame that was a good roller had some flat track tires on to begin with, so it had a decent set of rims, so we went with that. Dug a little deeper in the motors and pieces and parts pile, found a good motor, actually real good motor, and found an exhaust system off a of 390, adapted that so it would work on the uh, 360, difference in volumes on the cones and stuff and just kind of found a good gas tank, a good seat base, and just kind of kept it going from there. And Ryan had it all painted up and powder coated, and what you see is what we finished with. Ryan actually uh, had some pretty good runs, and it took a little learning curve to get going and everything, but he ended up winning the championship. Well, it made me feel pretty good that we were able to take a bunch of junk, put it together, and have a runner that was actually representing Husqvarna and uh, Ryan's abilities. My idea is if that one don't start, I'm gonna throw a leg over that one. You know, same number, same color gas tank so that I can go to the line and nobody will even know I swapped bikes, you know. Uh, but then, well, my son shows up about the time I'm building my spare. <laughs> so it kind of became his. So now I'm taking his, well, now I need another spare. Right? <laughs> so, well, uh, it's kind of funny how the spare, because the spare's this one over here, 85. Oh, Will and Jay showed up one day. They were supposed to be here at like 10 o'clock, 9 or 10 o'clock. And they showed up uh, at about 1. And I went out back and grabbed a frame, went right over there and grabbed a motor and blah, blah, blah. Because uh, Will, Will wanted to race the vintage class. They left here by six o'clock that night with a runner. Tires and the whole nine yards. <laughs> I mean, it was like, so, well, now I got another spare. And then, then I ended up buying another one. The reality of it is, is my focus has changed. I had a, I had a, a lot of, uh, if you will, even soul searching um, this year because I'm getting my ass kicked so bad. And I've always, the way I've, the way I've termed it is I'd like to go to the line with an anticipation of a podium. I can't do that anymore. I just don't. I'm not fast enough. Jay kicks my ass. Nesshofer uses me for berm every chance he gets. Uh, I'm changing my focus from, from that to the satisfaction that I receive when somebody comes off the track and they pull their helmet off and they go, God, that was fun. That was so scary. It was so fun. You know, people that have never done this before, you know, and uh, that I, I remember four years ago, five years ago, it was just after the last race. And Alan and uh, whoever else, I 
that might even been Rena. The home, all, you know, we were out down into the lake. They came off, they came off the ice, and Rena had her her group of friends over here, and Alan and, and Dave Deere were over here, and everybody was laughing and having a good time. And I'm just kind of over here, kind of by myself, just just looking at these other things that are going on. And man, the the feeling that came over me was so cool because. I had touched the lives, I had made it possible for all these people to now be standing around talking about what a good time they had during the day. You know, I made it possible for them to, to do this. And I've kind of gotten carried away with that, you know, uh, yourself, you know, somebody came up to me and said, hey, this guy wants to ride your motorbike. Well, okay. You know, I didn't know who you were from Adam. You know, I still didn't know even after you raced my motorbike. I'm going, I don't even know who that guy was. <laughs> you know, but I tell you, it's it's uh, it's led to making some good friends. I made a good friend out of Ryan uh, uh, for letting me. I let him ride uh, that one. Matter of fact, in fact that same day I let Sean ride one of the other ones, and both of the guys that I let race my motorcycles both beat. <laughs> made me look really slow. <laughs> My dad, um, he owned a BSA shop back in the day and was ice racing in Iowa and brought it, him and his friend brought it here to Colorado and he got us started, got me started when I was six years old. Well, I used to race with both my oldest sister, my older brother, and my younger brother. <laughs> and at one point, I used to be faster than Sean when we were on 80s. And then when we got bigger bikes, he blew past me. Now I'm the treasurer of Harry Romer's. I was secretary last year, and I was born into the club. My dad was in it long before I was ever born, so I'm a Romer for life. The investment is just trying to keep on top of the bikes, which Davey does a great job of and being in shape for it <laughs> and being mentally prepared to go out and race. I work at a gym, so I work out six days a week <laughs> and Davey doesn't work out at all, which is not fair. <laughs> there is that added pressure of being a girls in a man's sport because I want to do as good as I can. I want to beat the boys. Well, he had asked me out every day after the ice races and I told him no because it was the opposite direction of the way I had to go home. And then the last race my sister got in a crash and broke a couple ribs and I didn't know where the hospital was. So he showed me the way and we had our, we had dinner and he asked me out that night. The ice races to me, it seems pretty simple. You go around in a circle, you know, you just turn left. But everybody that's ever come and tried to do it, realized then how hard it is to do it and go fast, you know. So I think that's when they, people are gonna come out and try it. Everybody that's ever come out and try it has totally loved it and has had so much fun and realized then how much more challenging it is to be able to, to go fast on just a simple track, you know, because you think it's simple. You just go around, go straight, you turn left. You go straight, you turn left. Simple, right? Well, it's not as simple as you think and that's, once they fall into that and understand it, then they're just thriving to go better and faster the next time they come to the racetrack.